Hi, it's Lil from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be doing a steampunk inspired piece of furniture on a pine chest. So if you just look down, Matt's going to scan down. This is what this beauty looks like. It's got multiple sets of drawers. It's pine. Um, a little bit tired looking. There's some terrible scrapes on the top of it. There's some really bad gashes and bashes. So we're going to be adding lots of texture, a little bit of decoupage, some rusty elements, a little bit of stenciling, um, a little bit of everything really. And this isn't one that I could pre-plan. This is going to evolve as we go along because it'll be trial and error. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, when you're dealing with these and it's factory made, all the drawers are the same size. So you can take them out and not worry about them. If you're dealing with a piece that has multiple drawers that has been carpentry made, number the back so you can fit them all back in because... <laughs> ask me how I know um first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take get Martin to take all of the hardware off out of these drawers I might put some of this hardware back on here and there but I think each one is going to have an irregular kind of handle it's going to be that kind of piece uh it could do with a really good clean in here um I'm not going to I didn't I'm going to be chalk paint in over the top of this I want as much texture as possible I don't want any grease or dirt so I'm going to be cleaning all the, the smooth parts of grease and dirt um there's quite a year's worth of build up of grime and things in there so I'm going to try and get that out the best I can and um, that's what I'm going to do next okay so the drawers have all been taken out they were the most unusual drawers we have ever dealt with when it comes to the handles um the handles were wire that went through them and they went all the way through to the other side and then they were attached into Martin's just going to show you these if you can see them went through the furniture and then these bent back I can't even bend them like that and then this end was bent again into the back of the drawer which makes me think that this is maybe a wee bit better quality it's not cab it like cabinetry kind of Good, but I think it was probably an Indian piece of furniture. It wasn't just a cheap piece of like, pine with the drawers. I think it was probably came from India at some point, just because I've never seen this. If you've seen this, comment and let me know if you've seen this with furniture. I have never seen it and I've done furniture for a long time. So um, that was the handles. I have then subsequently sanded all of the air where the, the handles were just to get the, the rough varnish. And I've mixed up a brown today. Now it started with um it was a rustoleum uh, paint i talk about it quite a lot it's a good good middle of the road fabulous paint it's called fire brick and this it's this color generally fire brick and i've added lots of different colors to make a really dark chocolatey brown so i'm going to be painting the fronts the top and the sides with this chocolatey brown and i'm going to be painting just around the edges here these parts here in a cream to start with so you get what I'm doing cream round here not this part brown on here it's just to save you having to watch all this because I think this could be quite an involved video and I'm trying to cut down all the time that you have to watch me do stuff so that's what I'm going to do off camera next time you see it this will be chocolatey brown uh, oh the strokes as well this is very important especially on a piece like this because I think what they've done at some point is tried to set, sand it the top is very gnarly so you're going to need a blending brush strokes every which way with your chalk paint so that you can add as much texture in this piece as possible and that will help us when it comes to waxing at the end okay so our original color is completely dry i think when it's dried it's dried a really sort of dark sort of aubergine cross with a sort of coffee bean color it's really nice and i think that's because i put a little bit of blue in with the fabric as well and that's kind of obviously made a slight purpley hint it's a really nice color but now we're going to go all over the top of it so if you can just kind of see here i've started to put a rust effect on it now the easiest way to do this is you need an orange now i'm using a really thick orange this is the orange i used on the indian piece recently it is just about at the end of its lifespan but there's still enough in there for to do a rusty effect and I use all paint I never waste anything on a mat I have a piece of black and I've got this color here which the lid unfortunately got left off and so it's a bit thick as well it's a self-sealing paint the others are chalk paint 
and I've got some black. Now, the best way I choose to do this is, and I've done rusty effects and all sorts of things, and I've been doing it for such a long time that you can do all different kinds, but for the steampunk one, we're, we're looking for this. So the best thing to do is get a really, like sort of this kind of brush. So you're not gonna be using a blending brush. I've got another one over here as well. Brushes that are a bit wrecked, that, that give you this sort of stipply effect are the best kind of brushes. Start by putting a little bit of black, just a little bit, sort of almost dry brushing. So you want your black predominantly, I'll work on this area here, to be mostly in the center like this. And I'll match this up in a minute. Um, you want to put your sort of kind of darker tones into it in the center doesn't matter if it's heavier in some spots and lighter in others it's um you just want your black on and dry brush it up into the area now you can see i painted the insides of here of this furniture because it was so chipped i just wanted a nice smooth line on it so you should end up with something a bit like this then you need your orange so any orange will do it doesn't have to be crusty you can heat it up with a heat gun Put a little bit on a plate and heat it if you're using chalk paint and heat it up with a heat gun for a minute just to thicken it up so then your heavy rust would it would really be round edges so stipple your rust on so we're having some rust here around this edge and down this edge and up in here and put that on first and you can play about with it in a minute i mean maybe i've gone a bit heavy on the rust there then what you do is kind of brush off your brush and then take the excess off and then what you're doing is you're working that in you can come back over with some more orange of this color in a minute sorry for the banging and this becomes a little bit of a labor of love it will take you quite a bit of time till you get the rust effect that you're looking for now this is the beginning sort of what I kind of start with then you want to add your sort of yellowier color because rust also has a sort of yellowy tone if I can get any on my brush. So I'm adding a wee bit more yellow into this, especially around the edges. Now, now we're kind of getting somewhere. Now what you do is dry brush off, kind of get your excess off your brush again and kind of blend that in because you want that relatively kind of pushed back to the background, that yellow. And then what you do is Go back in with your thick orange and really decide where you want your rust to be because rust is thick and a bit gnarly so and really this is one of those ones that once you get it you'll be able to do it on anything i've done it on all sorts of things old brand well brand new things i've made them look rusty they're good for you know the big wooden letters that you can rust up and then get some screws and make them look like they've been riveted um Gosh, I've done it on loads of things, haven't I, Mara? <laughs> I mean, many, I've, many. I've done a many, many rusty finish. So really, rust kind of gathers. It looks like this. Put a little bit in the middle just to make it look like it's kind of joined over. But I'm quite happy with this. So that is how you do it. You can heat it up with a heat gun if you're using really loose paint. Heat your brush up. Make sure that your brush is, make sure it's crusty. And that's what's going to give it. And when this dries... The reason why I'm doing this is because it's so chipped, um, especially on the edges of the furniture. I'm really going to have to do a bit of rust there. I'm not going to do this finish on the top, just on the front and a little bit on the sides just to make it look like it's rusted up. But I really want it to go around all the drawers. Now, I've got this patch here that I didn't do because I started this bit over here off camera just so that I was getting my eye in from what I wanted it to look like. So I'm going to carry on, really. I mean, I hope you've got it. You kind of like... Put your black on first, swirl it around, swirl it around, swirl it around. Put your thick orange, swirl that around, swirl that around until you get a sort of base coat. Then you're stippling in your lighter yellow and then you go back with the thick texture and it's the orange at the end that gives it the thick texture. Lots of people do it different ways. You could add, if it was a piece of sign I was making I, while the paint was wet, I would sprinkle cinnamon over it or you can add a baking soda if you're doing things and you can do lots of ways to make thicken up the paint or salt wash i don't use salt wash although i'd love to i just never buy it but salt wash would give you exactly the same look it would just thicken up your paint so you could do this so if you have salt wash you're laughing already you know get it done in five minutes 
So you just play about with it until you're done. So I'm going to go on and do the whole of the front, this rusty effect. I put some of this Rust-Oleum Crackle over the top of the white. Now the white I only did one light coat and I put the crackle over the top. Now on the instructions it says only use with chalk based paint. I didn't. I used a self leveling paint on this part and I'm about to put a self leveling paint over the top. So if it ends up not crackling then this step has been for nothing. So I've just got some black here off to the side and I'm just going to paint it over here. And um, we'll see whether we get any sort of crackle. I'm looking for that sort of distress look. Um, but I want the black to show through. At the moment, I don't see any crackle, but we'll give it a chance. Um, I don't, I'm not looking for a solid in all of the grooves of this. It's more just a frame. So let's see if we can. My paint's quite thick. Um, but you get... You get what I'm doing now. All I'm doing now is framing out the drawers, leaving some of the cream underneath. There is method in this madness, but I'm not really. Actually, I am seeing a bit of crackle. I am. Maybe when it dries, um, it'll give me a wee bit more of a crackle. I am actually seeing it. Even just the way the paint's going on, it's going on with a. It's kind of repelling some areas, so that's kind of giving me the natural. I do want to bring it into this edge here and around here. And this is the kind of look I'm going for. And actually, do you know what? It is crackling. Just have to give it a wee minute. Look at that. Look at that there. Obviously, I was expecting it to be instant. Fabulous. Look at this here. So I'm going to go on. And I'm going to do this to all my drawers, leaving white areas around the edges and trying to get down right down to this edge here because that's where we're going to be putting some detail and decoupage paper. But no, I'm actually really happy. Look, it's doing a great job. Okay, so I'll do the rest of the drawers now. So we're going to be doing a little bit of stencil work along the front. I've removed the drawers that are going to be touching up where we're going to be doing it and left the ones that's going to, I'm not going anywhere near just in the piece. Now this is called Liquitex, it's um, a glass bead gel, so it's glass suspended in a thick gel, um, you can get it from any art supply. Um, there's other products, I think, I think maybe a Dixie Bell product has glass bead gel, I'm not entirely sure, but this way you can buy it and mix it up yourself and you can, it's probably cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, Martin will put a link to it. Um, it's a really handy way to get a raised stencil. So what you do with this is you can mix it with any paint colour, um, an acrylic paint, um, mica powder, you name it, and it gives texture. It's nice just if you're doing canvases and you want to put it on a canvas just to give it that kind of, it kind of is a little bit iridescent once it's dry. So what happens is the, the suspension liquid, acrylic medium, dries and you can just see the glass through it but it's good to tint it so that you can see all that so what i've done here is i've mixed up a little bit of gold and a little bit of bronze with the with the medium in it just in a container it's a container you can just throw away it's good to recycle all these things from your kitchen and then use them again but this one is one that won't you know i'm gonna have to bin and you need a sort of spatula scoop or you can do it with a makeup sponge but it doesn't have the same effect you know that kind of nail varnish you get with the the gems in it and it can be a little bit hit or miss and you have to give it about 40 coats that'll that's what will happen if you use a makeup sponge you'd have to work a little bit harder now uh i want to run down the piece like it's sort of mechanical wheels this stencil i'm not being too um particular um and how i do it It's a bit scratchy and a little bit scrapey, but you have to get it into all your sort of pieces and parts. You can scrape the excess off at the end. This is a good technique um, for doing drawer fronts. Now I'm having to, sorry, kind of move my hands around the loop. A little bit just so I can get the right positioning for this. 
sorry about the scratching, it's just the beads. No, I really want to change my position on my hands because I want to get this part up here. I'm trying not to get this square edge, I don't want it to make it look like a tile. Alright, I'm kind of happy with that. Just take off the excess. Like that. Kind of noisy. And comes off like that. And then the next lot I'm going to probably kind of have come in here. Just off the piece like that. And I'm just going to do some random single ones here and here. Just to make it run a little bit better. But I'm going to go down the piece doing this. Okay, so it's show time now. We've get, we're, we're getting on. We've got the carcass done. We've got some bits and pieces to do on the side. The top's got to be waxed. The whole front's got to be sealed. But the glass bead gel is drying right now. So we're going to get on to the drawers, which is the fun part. I've just spent about the last half an hour with my son going through all the handles that I will possess to try and find exactly what I want. Couldn't work out. He was confusing me. So Martin came back in and I said, look, just help me make sense of this. So I've written it down. <laughs> So I can move on now, now I know that the hand, I really like handles if you're obsessed with doing up furniture, I think handles are one of the things that I think about all of the time, so handles. Now this is from the Skullduggery collection of our new decoupage paper, it's one of three and they're all sort of similar kinds of things, there's a big skull, there's this one and the other one is a sort of kind of, it's got a kind of nod to autumn, it's got some autumn colours, big butterfly, it's got the distressed background etc. So this is the one I'm going to be using but since it's my range I'm just going to be using all of these so I've got a few of them <laughs> printed out. So what I'm going to do with the drawers is I am going to literally, I'm not even going to think about it too much because I'm going to do a grungy edge so it doesn't matter about our border or that we've got around the decoupage paper or anything. And I'm just going to literally rip it, rip it right across. Oh, I'm trying to rip it straight actually. Oh, there you go. There we go. And I'm just going to take this little edge off here at the top. Um, just so I've got something nice to butt my paint up against. Um, just like that. Now it's quite a feminine steampunk. I had to I had to put flowers in it somewhere. Um, so I put a little bit of florals, which is quite nice as well because it makes it a sort of less masculine piece. Yeah, I think that's pretty much there and thereabouts. I just kind of get off these little parts here that's going to be a little bit too big. It's worth taking a little bit of time to get this part right um, when you're decoupaging. Any bits that are too wide for the piece, just rip them off. There we go. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Today I am using Mod Podge because I'm still going over all the different kind of mediums that, um, that I can use. So a nice, thin, even, not too thick because that will give you bubbles of Mod Podge in there. And then making sure I've got my sort of placement correct. I'm just going to put it in, try not to pull it around. Smooth it down to my edges like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over the top of it. And we will come back and we'll put all our grungy colours because I'm still not, I think I'm probably going to do sort of blacks and browns around the edges. So I'm just going to go on and do this with all my drawers now. Um, there you go, wrinkle free, not a wrinkle. So I'm just going to leave that to dry, do the rest and then we'll come back and we'll just go around your edges. I just want to show you if you're because like if the paper doesn't fit all the way to the edge then how to piece it really easily with the decoupage paper this because this paper is a little bit more robust and it's a little bit thicker you can put it together so i didn't even bother ripping the edge off of that because i know that i'm going to put something on top of it smooth it out it goes on as smooth as butter then what i did was i just ripped some random pieces a bit more glue over the top and just patch patch it in and it doesn't look any different and the same on this end here I um, whipped up a little patch 
and it doesn't even have to be the same matching piece it just all goes in as one and when that dries it'll just look like part of the piece so that's what to do if there's a bit ripped when these dry off we'll come back and we'll put the grunge and i'm going to be putting dark wax over these just the lighter bits just to grunge it up to make to match everything else okay so martin had these metal panels in his shed and I asked him to drill some holes because I want to screw them onto the sides. I've painted them with a rusty finish and I have four of them and they're going to go above each other on the side panels of the furniture um, and I'm going to stencil some numbers on it and I have had these stencils, Martin and I were laughing, I reckon for about 10 years mm -hmm. these numbers. I have a whole packet of stencils that I've just had for years and they're still going strong, there's nothing wrong with them so you know, when it comes to usage and maybe purchasing plastic, which isn't environmentally friendly, if you just keep a hold of them, I think these stencils will outlive me. So there you go. There's a little stencil chat. So I'm just going to pick random numbers. Now, I want to put four on, but Martin says three. And you know what? Sometimes, you know, I just ignore them, really. To be honest with you, I'm starting with the middle number just so I know. Now... I'm sorry you're having to look at the green carpet of uh, of joy, but that's the way it is. Oh, that was a bit juicy. I think this might have bleed through, but we will see. Nine. Oh, I think he's going to be right as well. That's I find that quite irritating, but never mind. I'll just put the three on in the middle, and I'm just kind of doing that, and I think I'll do. Uh, I turn this this way, it'll have the same distance apart as the other ones. Now, if it was really kind of stamped on in a factory, it'd be all wonky and a little bit kind of, you know how, but I'm normally wonky anyway, so. So I'm going to do these plates just like this. I'm, I'm not even going to fill in all the gaps because I want it to look like this. I'm just going to go back over this eight a minute. I'm just checking. It doesn't look, it doesn't look, the eight doesn't look right because I did it backwards. Let's see if I can fix this. I think it'll probably make a mess. I nearly said balls it up there. I know you're not, maybe I'll get cancelled. There we go. So I'm going to do... The other four of these and get Martin to screw these onto the side of the furniture. Just as a little kind of Easter egg, a little bit of something extra for people to, to look at another sort of saleable feature. So I'll do these and then the next thing we'll do is we'll slide this back into position and we'll start working on the drawers and getting them all tarted up ready. So I've got the original colour that's on the top and a little bit of black and I've mixed it up. And all I'm doing is just rolling it into all the edges like that i'm just rolling it in to anywhere where we ripped our decoupage paper just to seal it all in if it doesn't need it don't do it um there's a part down here so just down here there's a big part here just kind of grunge up all the edges anywhere where there's any um Part. Now, the, the Mod Podge isn't quite dry, but that's kind of working in our favour as they're kind of blending together. So just bring that right along there, like that. So that's all I'm doing with the black. Um, next, when the black dries, we'll dark wax in each of these. And um, it's just to make sure there's no bits of the bare wood showing. That's all I'm doing now. Okay, so just off camera there, what I did was I kind of touched the black edge with a little bit of copper and I did some copper accents on my beading just so that it wasn't so glaringly gold. I think maybe I put a bit more gold in it than copper and it's a bit gold. So now I've taken that all away. I've stenciled some random numbers here and there on the piece. Um, there's a zero there. You know, just some numbers just to kind of make it all work. And... Um, I put some cogs on just kind of here and there. Now what I'm going to do, I did it on the parts that had quite a lot of the peel background just to fill out the background. 
So I'm going to start with this one here and I'm going to put some dark wax on. You can see I just want to point this out here. I know it was um, steampunk, but obviously I'm Scottish, so I managed to get this all in there. <laughs> um, so you can do this either two ways. You can either use a brush, which for me seems a little bit too no way. So, or you can use your finger. And all I'm doing now is making it mucky. Um, just taking away that sort of kind of the paler colour and making it fit with everything else. I'm not going to go crazy. Well, I might do, but um, just kind of grunging everything up a little bit. You know, some heavier spots, like I'm going to do a heavy spot here and maybe just run some around that number there. But that's all I'm going to do to, to each one of the drawers, literally. I'm just going to grunge it up. And the next thing, I'm, once I've done this, and I'll do it off camera, but it's just so you know, I'm going to take this dark wax and I'm going to completely wax the top because the top, top's looking good now and I want to keep it that way. Um, I'll probably just do that off camera. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so what's happened so far is I waxed, dark waxed the top and I sealed the front. Sealed the sides, everything's been done and Martin has excelled himself because none of these handles fitted the drawers and he's had to do a whole load of jiggery pokery just to get them on. So what I've done is I've mixed really vintage with these newer dragonflies. Um, I've got old brass handles here, vintage ones, mixed with brass plate, some more dragonflies, just little round brass ones, and the old brass ones there. Now what I found in my stash was these... They're broken bits off of handles, you know, the bit goes around there, but I've kept these parts. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to get Martin to screw these on to here for me, along here. But before I do that, I have found this in my stash, this tiny little stencil. So I'm going to put some numbers and I'm just going to do them with a sort of grey colour just so they show up. Um, Actually, they're going that way, so the number has to go that way. And I'm just going to stencil the numbers, and I'm going to get Martin to screw these on here on the piece. And after that, I think that we are finished. And we're finished. What techniques did I show you today? How to do a, and apply a rusty paint effect finish, and then you can then you recreate it on anything, vases, you name it. It's really important when you do something like this to make sure that you do some drips. Just add a bit of water. I forgot to say that drips and runs. That's what rust does. And it kind of gives it a more sort of logical, that makes sense appearance. Raised stenciling. Never showed you that before. <coughs> with the raised bead gel, just add your colour to it and then apply it with a sort of spatula, scraping the excess off. Of course, my lovely decoupage paper. This is from the Skull Duggery collection. Uh, Martin applied all my handles. The top was a paint colour I mixed myself, which is a sort of dark cocoa bean sort of slash aubergine kind of colour. It's been all waxed, the piece has all been sealed and boom we're done. So I've been learned from me by Marley. If you really enjoyed this give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. If you haven't already subscribed could you please consider subscribing and I'll see you again another day. Thank you.